They say they're misunderstood. You don't go looking for it, but it's, you know, we're not, never going to back away from anywhere that wants it, you know. They are the Rebels, Australia's largest outlaw motorcycle gang with an estimated 2,000 members split into more than 60 chapters across the country. Yeah, that's what it is, the Brotherhood, yeah. Where loyalty, trust and getting the club's colours mean everything. Rebel forever, forever rebel, you know, but um, it's just while you've got this patch on your back, that's, that's sort of what you, uh, you know, just the motto of, of uh, what we're all about, that's all. John Parker is one of the Rebels' longest-serving members and president of their mother chapter in Brisbane. We're just a mob of guys that like riding motorbikes, it's our hobby. The first ever chapter of the Rebels was founded in Brisbane in 1969 and they have a few mementos gathered over the years. And not the sort of thing a normal motorcycle club would expect to collect. We are targeting people we believe um, are criminals and also pose a great risk to uh, members of the public. After months of meetings and what can best be described as a feeling out period, the Rebels have invited us to tag along. The only condition was that they didn't want us to show the faces of some half-naked women in the clubhouse. Nothing else was off-limits. We've even been invited on a ride to Canberra. No news organisation or reporter, certainly in this country, has ever been given such access to an outlaw motorcycle gang. Let's see what happens. Inside the Rebels, it's strictly members only. Bikey business is done in private. Make no mistake, this is a public relations exercise for them, as bikey gangs have been getting a lot of attention of late, and they don't like it. I just want to let people know, just get the story straight. You know, there are guys out there that ride motorcycles that probably do get into a lot of trouble. But that doesn't mean everybody you know, is a bad person just because they ride a motorcycle with a set of colours on their back. Did you think you'd see the day when the rebels would have chapters around the world? Never in my wildest dreams. Like a growing army, the rebels rely heavily on obedience to rank and a code of conduct that includes members attending weekly meetings in clubhouses right across the country. You know, some people might think it's some sort of secret meeting about what we're going to get up to but it's not that at all it's just a few beers have a laugh and you know maybe plan our next run or our next holiday party or whatever i'm not suggesting that uh, all members of outlaw motorcycle gangs have criminal convictions or criminal histories but quite a lot do detective inspector gary watts heads up task force hydra the specialist police unit created to deal with queensland bikey gangs since the inception of Task Force Hydra, we've uh, arrested and charged over 450 people with uh, about 3,500 charges. Now, all, now, not all those people are outlaw motorcycle gang members, but certainly the majority would be. He says while John Parker may be in it for long rides and parties, some others join and use a bikey club's reputation for organised crime, running protection rackets, extortion and drug distribution. Well, certainly drug trafficking and the, uh, the trafficking of amphetamines and, uh, and MDMA and other uh, pills is a, a mainstay of some criminal networks operating within outlaw motorcycle gang members. I'm sure no drug dealer is going to be riding around with a set of colours on his back, a German helmet and some noisy pipes on his Harley, you know, it just, I don't think that works. And it didn't for former Rebels president of the Fraser Coast chapter, Adam McRae, who's just been jailed for seven years after pleading guilty to eight charges of possessing and supplying various drugs. McRae, who was on welfare, used limousines to transport drugs from the Gold Coast to Harvey Bay for distribution. It's proof, that it's fact, that these people, or some of these members of the outlaw motorcycle gangs, are involved in serious crime. John Parker says these characters are the exception rather than the norm in the club, rebels within the rebels, if you like, and they are dealt with. It's an individual thing. No, no way in the world it's club organised. You know, anybody that ever gets, you know, or especially even in, in our club, that might 
get into trouble for doing something wrong. It's never, ever a club organised thing. The gang itself hands out punishment to members breaking the law. You know, they'll have their bikes confiscated off them and thrown out of the club immediately. Do you have a criminal record? No, just traffic offences, that's all. I haven't got no criminal history whatsoever. But wherever they go, police follow and watch them, especially on their annual runs. All members are expected to take part. Only those in hospital or jail are excused. Generally, when we go on a run, there's a lot of us in one big group and, uh, the, you know, the sound and, and the atmosphere, it's just amazing. Stephen Tapo Keeley is one of the club's newest members. The part I like is... Um, I get, to, I get to ride my motorcycle all over Australia. It's just like our yearly holiday. Like, you know, I just pack up and forget everything that you, you left behind. Everything except a large police contingent with officers ready and waiting as they leave for Canberra. It really is amazing the number of police involved in what so far has just been an escort. We've counted 13 cars and there are a few motorbikes as well in a convoy stretching about a kilometre along the highway. A police presence is felt the entire journey. They're checked for licences, roadworthies, noise violations, helmet compliance and, of course, drugs and alcohol. Well, I think that was the biggest waste of taxpayers' money that I've ever seen in my life. Is an element of it, though, getting under their skin? No, it's to ensure that they behave and they comply with the, the traffic regulations. Gary Watts makes no apologies for the zero tolerance approach, regardless of what the offence is. Since we established the, the gauntlet policy, uh, we've seen traffic offending uh, reduced uh, to almost non-existent. Detective Inspector Watts says in the past it's been found bikey gangs use non-members to manufacture and sell drugs. We've actually found a variety of networks operating and the way they do business is quite different. But yes, we certainly have found that to remain um, aloof uh, or distant from the trafficking uh, seems to be an aim of uh, some of the more higher level members of outlaw motorcycle gangs. He says gangs also actively recruit new members to keep the club young and strong. Young males, uh, um, large, uh, physically imposing with a propensity of violence seem to be attractive to them. For those who have been recruited, like Stephen Tapo Keeley, the road to becoming a rebel can be long and tedious. The club voted to make him a nominee member, meaning he could go on rides, but still had to perform menial jobs around their clubhouse. Your chores or your work could involve, you know, cooking the barbecue, um, serving drinks. Tapo had to wait 18 months before a second vote promoted him to being a full member and he finally earned his club colours. Very proud, very exciting, um, just an unbelievable feeling really. Now to stay in he'll have to follow the rebels rules which govern how chapters are run. Members must ride Harley Davidson's. It is a cooler bike to have. The vest that bears the Confederate flag must never be defaced. <laughs> Colours must only be worn when members are riding their bikes, never in cars. And colours must be handed back by members who can leave, but not to join another club. I don't think anybody would want to. I, I would never think about joining another club. When the Melbourne shooter Christopher Wayne Hudson defected from the Finks to the Hells Angels, the Finks shot him in the face. Also covered tattoos. Only members of more than five years can have club tattoos, but if you want one on your back, you'll have to wait ten. As for women, they can't join, be told, club business, or even wear clothing like rebel t-shirts. We all look after our our, uh, our girlfriends, wives, etc. Um, no, but I mean, this is, you know, it's a, you know, a boys exclusive club. But the Queensland government is trying to make sure they abide by even more rules. I do agree to which hunt. Adam McGill is a former police officer turned lawyer. He defends bikies and is concerned gang members could be banned from associating with club mates under anti-association legislation. We don't live in a dictatorship. 
that these laws are indicating that's the direction we're going. Although similar laws have already failed in the courts in New South Wales and South Australia, that hasn't stopped Queensland police applying to have the Fink's Motorcycle Club on the Gold Coast declared a criminal organisation. Essentially, they can tell you who you're allowed to contact, whether it be direct or indirect. If successful, the laws could be extended to other gangs, including the rebels. That would mean John Parker could be jailed simply for doing this talking to his brother, another long-serving rebel. Well, how ridiculous is that? He's the vice president. Yes, yeah, how ridiculous is that? There's no shortage of evidence that bikey gangs are violent, dating back to the Milpera massacre, where the Bandidos and Comancheros staged a shootout in a hotel car park on the outskirts of Sydney. It saw seven people killed, including an innocent girl, and 28 people injured. Almost no major town with a bikey gang has been without some sort of violent altercation between clubs. Is it a fair comment that the violence is spilling out onto the streets? Um, it certainly has, and, and, and it has the potential to do. That's why we as the service take it so seriously. The rebels too in Brisbane have seen violence at the hands of the banditos. Their clubhouse was torched in 2007. Four banditos were charged. Again, last year, the rebels' clubhouse was riddled with bullets. Well, lucky nobody was hurt. We still don't know what that was about. Uh, the police have been trying to investigate it. Maybe if they used all those cops that were following us down the freeway the other day to do a bit of investigation, they might be a bit further down the track with that. One thing is certain. Being a bikey may not mean you're a criminal, it does mean you're a masked man, the patch a target for police and other outlaws. In the end, it's that patch on their back is what they're going to have to uh, you know, be loyal to.